Hello everyone, welcome back to our Redis tutorial. In this video, we are going to be taking a look at our list cache. So as you may remember, in the previous video, we looked at our Redis value cache. We have implemented some nice stuff there. We can actually jump to it. Uh, so we are able to cache some values. We are able to get those values and delete them from the cache. In uh, this video, this one, we are going to go back to our uh, Redis list cache, which we implemented in the very first configuration video where we just showed some uh, nice things. So we are going to actually implement some methods here. We're going to explain what's the list cache, how it can be used, and what's the difference in between the list cache and the value cache. So when to use the value cache and when to use the list cache. Okay, let's get started. The first thing that we uh, want to do here is we want to get it a bit prettier. So we want to re get rid of this method. We want to get rid of some um, fields that we have here that we actually don't need. So let's just do that uh, at the beginning. And here it is. So we have uh, gotten rid of some things that we didn't need. And now we have everything nice and ready for the uh, next implementations. So let's take a look at the difference in between the value cache and the list cache. I guess you already see it. The value cache is used when you want to cache a single value and the list cache is used for something that's um, you have more of them. For example, the list cache, uh, its key is always linked to a list. So for example, in our case, we have the person DTO, which we use to store in our value cache and we use the person ID as uh, a key to link to the person DTO. So one person has its ID and it's linking to that person in the cache. That's okay. But for example, in the list cache, we would maybe have a key that's a bit more generic. For example, all persons, and then we link a list of persons. So it's not a specific value. So a single person, it's a list of different persons. Um, some places where you actually might uh, want to use the list cache is, for example, when you have some kind of throttling. Imagine that you have two applications. So you, for example, have your microservice, which is receiving some data and it receives a lot of persons like it just pushing them and then it needs to do some calculations with them or whatever and then uh, push it forward. You probably don't want to do like everything in bulk. You want to separate those requests. For example, you want to say, OK, yeah, I want to uh, take five persons at a time, convert them, do some things with them and then send them further on. That's where you could use the list cache. Your uh, microservice would receive data from somewhere. So it would receive these persons. You would cache them and then you would have some kind of timer or something in your microservice, which would read this person cache and would take five items from it, for example, from the end, and it would just uh, push them or do whatever you want with them. So let's take a look at that. Let's take a look and see how we can actually uh, store some person. So let's create a method that would take in a key and a list of person details and would actually cache them in Redis. So let's just implement it and then we'll explain what it actually does. And it's simple as that. We have a method which takes in a key and a list of person details, so our persons, and we are iterating them and using the list operations left push to push the key and the person. So basically imagine this situation. You get a list of persons with IDs 1 to 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, exactly in that order. Uh, the left push would uh, iterate through that list. It would take a key. So some key that you're passing in and it would take the first uh, item in a list, which is a person with an ID one and it would use left push and push it in a array. And for example, let's just have it here. So you ha you're using your left push and you have one. Then the next one comes in in this list, which would be two. And then again, you use left push. Then you have two. Then you would have three. You would have four and you would have five. So this is your uh, list now in Redis, it's actually inverted than what you actually passed in here. So this would be at index 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So 0 to 4. 
and that's something to keep in mind so the list gets actually inverted because we are using the left push you will later see that we have right pop which means take this item and pop it from the list so just keep that in mind in our example we are going to actually send the inverted list so it's a bit easier to see what we have in redis great now let's take a look and see how we can actually read this um, cache so how we can actually see what's inside let's create another dto let's call it something like range dto this uh, range dto would have two properties it will have from and to which would be just integers So we created a range GTO with two properties called from and to, which are integers, and we are going to use them to actually set, say to the cache, yeah, give me some data from this to that. Okay, now let's implement a method here, which would take in a key and it would take this range GTO and it would actually print uh, some, so return a list of person DTOs um, in that given range. So let's just do that. And that's it. So we have our method, which is called get persons in range. We pass in the key and we pass in our range DTO. And then from the list operations, we use the range method, which takes in the key that we have and from to range. And then um, we are just checking if the objects that we got returned are empty. If yes, then we just return an empty list. Otherwise, we just uh, map the person DTO um, so we map the objects to the persons and return the mapped list. Great. Now let's create something else. Let's see how we can actually take the last element of uh, this list cache. This is something that uh, you would probably want to do if you want to read one by one. And you have to make sure that uh, you understand that if you use this method, the write pop, uh, it's called, that it actually removed the item from the list from the cache. So let's just implement it and then uh, we'll see how it looks like. And that's it. So this, uh, this will get us our last element. Right pop actually takes the element from the end of the list. As always, you have nice Java doc here, so you can take a look at the Redis documentation. You can see what all of these uh, methods do. So you have different uh, overloads here, so you can take a look at them if you're interested. Of course, a list operations offer a um, bunch of methods here. We have a trim method, we have index, which we can actually get um, an, uh, an item by its index. For example, you know there is something on index five, you can just uh, request it and just get it. That would not remove it. Uh, you can left pop, which would take the first element from the list. Um, yeah, there is basically a lot of methods here. I will not go through all of them. There is a size, which you can check the size of the array. And yeah, everything uh, here is nice. I'm just showing you the basics. And let's now see how we can delete some entities in bulk. So let's create a method that would trim uh, an array in a certain range. So let's um, implement it and then I will explain what I'm doing. And yeah, that's it. It's quite actually simple. Um, so what this does, it trims an array. So it trims this Redis cache that we have from a certain um, index to a certain index. Keep in mind in our example, uh, if we have it like five, four, three, two, one, and we say trim from zero to one, which would be this one and this one, that would not actually remove these two elements elements, it would remove these three. So for example, if you say trim from uh, one to three, so one, two, three, that would remove one, and it would remove the five. So the range that you pass in here is the one that's going to be saved. And the, everything else is just trimmed, which means deleted from the Redis. 
Great. Now let's implement our controller. So let's just extend our person controller that we have uh, to use these methods and then we can see them in action. Um, so let's start with the cache persons. We can actually just uh, copy paste this and create a nice method here. Great, so this would uh, use our list cache and it would cache the person. So we added an endpoint to which we just uh, pass in our ID. And we have to add our list cache to the constructor and we can make it final. And let's now implement the rest. So I'll just close some of these um, which we do not need anymore. So uh, let's take the Redis list cache and let's implement now this method. Uh, yep, so it's again simple. We just um, take in our key and range called method and I just added the list endpoint because we already have the get mapping here so this would not work. So um, Seems like we have an error somewhere, but I guess, ah, okay, yeah, return. Um, yep, let's now take a look at this one. So let's implement that one. We can actually uh, change this one. So to have it like slash list so that all of our endpoints are at the list extension. So just at the slash list, we would get the last element with the key that we forward. So we also have to have the key. So fast and key. Great. Now let's implement the last one, which is our trim method, to which again we are passing in the key and the range. Yep, that's pretty much it. I will uh, stop my application because it was already running. I actually have my server running, so make sure that you have it also so that Redis is started. And uh, let's start application again. I'm starting it in a debug mode. It's just a nice thing that I got used to, but you don't have to, so you can just start it in a normal, not debug mode. Nice. So now let's go to our um, uh, postman. I already have prepared some endpoints, but they probably will not work because I just added a list path, so I have to extend them. So list, this would be um, this first endpoint which we added, where we pass in the key, which is just my key, and a list of uh, persons. As you can see, they are inverted, so we start from 10, 9, just for that's easier, because then when we push it, this will again be inverted, so we will have this one at the first position, because we're using the left push, so it will just get pushed, and this one would end up at the first position, so at index uh, 0. So um, we have that one, we have uh, to get a person by a key in certain range, so from 4 from to 10, and that would be uh, this endpoint. And I, we have also this one, which is now let's change it a bit. Uh, so it will be list, last, and the key. So this would get the last element. And let's also change this one. This one is now a bit different. So let's uh, change it to list. And again, my Key. So this is just the name of the key that I have and we are passing in in a body we are passing in um, so we have to switch to raw JSON and we can actually copy it from here so this will be our body and so this is how we trim it and that's pretty much it so let me just see yeah here I forgot something so we have to path variable and also we have to make this at request body. So I have to restart my application. I can just do it from here or just click this and it will be restarted. Let's clear, close this event log and wait for the application to start. Perfect. Now let's go to Postman and let's cache our elements. 
So this should have worked. We should have cached some elements. Now we want to just read them. So we want to read everything. If you want to read everything, you say, I want from zero to minus one. Minus one basically means, yeah, all the way to the end, whatever you have. So if you list them, we get them back. So we get our 10 elements. Now, if I want to say, I want it to just two. So we send it, we got zero, one, two. So we've got three elements index zero. If you say I want from um, two to two, this will just get you the element at index three, which is exactly what we want. Perfect. Now um, I want to get the last one. So remember, this would actually get you the last one, which is 10. Perfect. But it would also remove it from the cache. So if we go back and we say I want from zero to minus one, which is everything, the 10 should not be re uh, returned. So if you go back to the bottom, you can see that the nine is there. So if I call this one again, I should get now nine. And if I call this one, yeah, eight is the last one. So the, this uh, is something that you have to take care of. Right pop actually removes the element. This is actually quite good uh, in that case where I told you where your uh, application needs to send element by element or however you want. And that's where you can use it. You can say, yeah, I want, uh, just the last elements and uh, I just want to call that one and get those elements but immediately remove them from the cache because I'm not interested anymore in them. That's the thing that you can use. Great. Now let's see a trim. What can we trim? So we have uh, currently eight elements. So from zero to seven. And if we say now I want, um, let's say index five, actually let's go index four and index six. So from four to six, that would leave five, six, and seven. So if I trim it from four to six, send this, and then request all of the elements, I'm getting the five, six, and seven. You can see that everything else after seven, which was just the eight, and everything before five was deleted. So before the, these IDs. And I think that's everything that I wanted to show you. Um, I guess if you have any questions, you just have to let me know and then I will try to explain them for you. But this seems to be quite simple and easy to understand. In the future, we'll probably uh, touch some other different ways of caching, uh, which are also really cool and have some neat tricks. And combining all of these together can really uh, spice up your application and make it nice and pretty and you can uh, use the Redis functionality in its full. So if you have any questions, if something is unclear or uh, I moved over something too fast, just let me know and I will try to answer it uh, to you as soon as possible. And of course, all of this code will be available on GitHub. So I will just push it there and you will be able to find it and take a look at it uh, for yourself or just check out the project and see how it works. You will have to include the uh, endpoints in Postman. I'll actually see if I can uh, export these. Maybe I can and then I can just include them in the project. So you can just import it in Postman if you're using it. If not, yeah, then you can just type it out. It's not that hard. Great. So um, if you like this content, please do uh, like this video and subscribe to my channel. And I will see you in the next one.